will show you a short little passage. And in this passage, there are many new words, formally labeled as neologisms or shinjual in Korean. We want you to tell us how many neologisms are in this passage. Let's take a look. It was a freezing winter night. One could see nothing was wrong. A lonely man was upstairs in his bedroom after day's work. He sat at his desk and started writing, drinking a cheap wine, his only belonging. It was a love letter to his dead wife. Tears rolled down on his gloomy bare face as he wrote his feelings away. He soon fell asleep, his murmur inaudible. Today was a useless day. Well, that got really dark really fast. But how many geologists did you find? A show of hands? How about? How many neologisms do you think there are? You don't know. Well, it's actually 13. These were neologisms in the old days that became real official words, and now we can't live without them. These days, however, neologisms are deemed merely as silly words that ruin a language. But just like what is shown in the passage, neologisms, contemporary neologisms, have the potential to be equally essential. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Hui Lee, and I'm Jiu Ling, and we're English major students. As you would have guessed, today we're going to talk about neologisms. In today's society, neologism has a bad reputation of ruining our language. But is it really true? No. In fact, we believe neologisms can open up the better future of language. In our presentation, we we'll first talk about the dominantly negative perception on contemporary neologism. Then we'll look at the history of language, specifically on how Shakespeare's neologisms positively influenced the language development. Then we'll expand this to the contemporary neologism and give you three reasons why contemporary neologism can positively influence the future of language. So, as we have mentioned many times before, people these days don't like neologisms. But why? Well, the common belief is that neologism spoils the language. According to a survey from Job Korea, nearly 60% of the adults from 20s to 40s think that neologism spoils the language habit. Moreover, more than half of the participants said they were either indifferent or have a negative impression of people who use neologism, ranking them as having a bad language habit or shallow. The problem actually gets worse in the survey of high school students, in which 84% of the students think that neologism creates language deterioration. However, the history of language clearly shows that neologism is in fact massively important in language development. And Shakespeare is a prime example. Shakespeare's neologisms had a sensational impact on the development of language. There are allegedly 1,700 to 3,000 entirely new words created by Shakespeare. And many of these words we actually now use still um, every day, all day. For example, uh, champion, cold-blooded, excited, uncomfortable, and a few thousands more of all Shakespeare's ingenious inventions. Back in the days, these words were also very new and bizarre to people, and perhaps they also thought that these were ruining the authentic English. But now, where would English be without these words, without neologism? So, Clearly, this shows that neologism is in fact really important in the development of language. So, neologisms, the past neologisms, show us how helpful they can really be. Contemporary neologisms are no different, and the following three aspects will explain why. First, is the, is the expansion of expression, just like Shakespeare's words. Contemporary neologisms provide us new, creative expressions. Not only are they creative, but they're very authentic in context. In fact, there are many words that are so accurate in explaining a situation that they were accepted to be a dictionary entry. Some examples are 
Bench Watch, Humble Wrap, Netbeer, and YOLO. These are all accepted to be in the Oxford English Dictionary. Second positive aspect is efficiency. What would otherwise have to be explained in wordy, detailed sentences can be easily replaced by a simple word. For example, 정말 말이 안 나올 정도로 어이없다 means I'm so dumbfounded to the point of being unable to speak. We don't have to say all of this because there is a word for it. Do you know what it is? Hard. <laughs> Last but not least, neologism is an excellent tool to portray as well as shape the generation's cultures and values. For instance, recent Korean neologisms tend to portray the depressing reality of Korean society. There is ingurum, which means 90% of humanities students don't get a job. This is very sad for us because we're humanities students. There's also homo interns, which refers to someone who is always an intern and never a full-time employee. These kind of examples are a response to socioeconomic issues that the younger generations face, such as high unemployment rate, the inequality of opportunity, and the, and the difficulty of securing low entry jobs. Like this, neologism is a reflection of the, of the society's problems. And through many people knowing the words and using them, these issues come to light, ultimately spreading and shaping a particular perception. So, in conclusion, many people may think that neologism is ruining our language. But today we've all seen the positive aspect of neologism demonstrated by Shakespeare, and it seems that contemporary neologism may also have potential to positively influence our language and our society. So, let's ask ourselves one more time. Is neologism truly ruining our language? Perhaps not. So maybe neologism is just the way to the better future of language. That was the end of our presentation, and thank you for your time and attention.